Great. Thank you very much, Tom, for the um, for the the nice introduction and for having me here to speak. Um, I am required to tell you that to get credit for this presentation, that you need to um, to sign in and to do an evaluation. Um, there's no commercial interest in this Grand Rounds presentation. Um, I, I'm part of one drug company study, but I am not going to be presenting those data at all, so there's no conflict of interest for this presentation. Um, so, of course, it takes a small village to run studies like these, so I'd like to, to thank my collaborators. Of course, I want to highlight the senior scientists, uh, my mentor at the, the School of Medicine, Stephanie, uh, Mike Cummings from New York Quitline, and then of course, of course, uh, of course, Peter Salve, who is the primary person that got me um, involved in these types of studies. At that time in 2002, Peter was chair of psych, and since then he's gone through two two deanships, and uh, of course now he's provost. Um, I want to thank our funders, especially National Cancer, uh, the National Cancer Institute, and the New York. State Department of Health. Um, so this is a very learned group, so this is probably not new information, but um, smoking accounts for about 435K deaths in this country per year. Um, the most recent numbers are that there are about 46.6 uh, million smokers, or 20.6% smokers in this country right now. Now that number, uh, in 2005 was 20.9 percent, and so it's really plateauing. So it was 20.9, uh, 20.9, and now it's 20.6. So clearly, there's still a current need for um, quit smoking efforts and uh, kind of new treatments. So um, there are about 4,000 plus chemicals in smoke. Um, from those, we're sure that 250 cause, uh, cause harm, and greater than 50 cause cancer. So these are really bad things. Cadmium, chromium, really bad chemicals. Um, smoking causes about a third of cancer deaths. Um, in certain, certain cancer types like lung, it's more like 90%. And of course, smoking is involved in, in many cancers. Um, so, that begs the question, what types of messages do we want to give patients when we want to encourage them to quit smoking? Um, w we talk about messages in terms of being game framed or highlighting the kind of positive aspects of quitting or being loss framed, meaning that they highlight the cost to continue smoking. I think we all know that current mass media is very loss framed. So a pack away from this. Um, smoking causes fatal lung cancer. This is very loss framed stuff. Um, this is from a foreign country. This is one of Peter's uh, co uh, colleagues. And these are actual cartons of Kent. And so smoking can cause a slow and painful death. Smokers die younger. Very, very loss frame. Now, although this is true and that most mass media is currently loss framed, prospect theory would predict that really it's gain frame that will promote quitting smoking. Now, what's prospect theory? Prospect theory is a uh, a um, uh, it's a Nobel Prize winning theory. It was founded by Danny Kahneman and uh, Tversky, uh, Kahneman won the Swiss Bank Prize in 2002. At that point, unfortunately, um, uh, Tversky had died. Um, so prospect theory says, in the realm of gains, people stay away from risk. In the realm of losses, people seek risk. Meaning that prospect theory would predict that quitting smoking would be promoted better by, uh, by game frame messages because quitting smoking is going to cut down risk for problems like cancer, uh, stroke, cardiac problems. 
And so we have several studies at Yale, currently five primary studies, and uh, I mean several secondary uh, studies uh, that have shown this to be true. So I do kind of the standard biomedical clinical trials in clinic, and then I also do more public health clinical trials. So I'm going to give you a background of a clinical trial uh, was done in clinic, and that leads to the main presentation, which is a more public health oriented clinical trial. So uh, this first trial um, was a randomized clinical trial, and we randomized 258 smokers to gain or loss framed interventions. Um, patients in both groups got bupropion or Zyban at the standard dose. Frame messages uh, were given by two frame films, total running time of 22 minutes, um, and print media. So, and these are a, a few statements from the films. So, this is the standard 430K lives lost compared with uh, lives saved. And then, instead of negative here, it's the benefits to quitting smoking, a positive impact. And so um, in this study, the treatment time period was approximately six weeks. Um, and we saw a nice bump of about 12% um, for those exposed to the game-framed intervention. Um, uh, uh, there was a 12% benefit. Um, uh, and so I presented these data in 2005 at a smoking conference, a uh, smoking treatment conference, um, and Mike Cummings, who's the PI of the New York State Smokers Quit Line, approached me and said, you know, Ben, it'd be great if you tested these frame messages in my quit line. Now, if you've gone to New York, to, to Manhattan or Bronx or anywhere, there's currently a paper campaign where they are currently advertising to give out free patches and free counseling. So I said, great, and we wrote an NCI grant, and we got it, um, and, we, um, and we conducted the study I'm going to present. Before that, though, I'd like to put it in context of kind of what quit lines are. So the, the state quit line through New York is a very busy service. So last year, uh, it served 222,000 callers. Um, and these callers, it's entirely free treatment, and you get two, fr two free weeks of drugs, patches, gum, uh, or lozenges, um, and two free counseling sessions. Uh, telephone quit lines, uh, in general, are a, a good way t to reach and treat, uh, excuse me, a bunch of smokers. So cur current, current research currently says about 1% reach, means that um, of smokers th through this country, about 1% currently call quit lines. But uh, if you live uh, in this country from anywhere, you can call this free phone number and get free counseling, and in about a third of places, free meds. So, there are many, many studies now comparing the quantity of calls, counseling time, meaning you know, five minutes compared to 15 minutes, uh, amount of medications, so is it a two-week starter pack or a four-week starter pack? Uh, but no study to date has looked at counseling content, which kind of shocked me, actually. And so what we wanted to do through this game frame messaging study is to test, could quitline specialists be trained to give game frame messages? And then if we could, uh, if we could train them, like would exposure t to the game frame counseling plus print, print media pr produce increased quit outcomes? And so what we did was created uh, the game frame intervention through uh, through, through focus groups, and you see, okay, so this is the standard quit smoking brochure 
currently mailed uh, by the state quit line. So instead of smoking kills people, uh, it's going to be lives are saved by, uh, by quitting smoking. Common problems caused by smoking, uh, instead of that, it's uh, quitting smoking prevents these problems. And this black lung, clearly very law trained. I cut that. Um, and then one more panel too. So smokers are more likely to get these problems compared to quitting smoking, you're not going to get these problems. And then down here, people exposed to smoke are more likely to get these problems compared to people not exposed to smoke are, are going to be less likely to get these problems. Okay? So I approached the staff of the uh, quit line and we randomized 28 quit line specialists to the game frame counseling group and the standard care counseling group. Um, a team of Yale-based psychologists called these specialists weekly to achieve and then maintain a certain skill level for the counseling format. Okay? And we exposed approximately 2,000 callers to these interventions. So if you work at the quit line and you're a quit coach or quit specialist, your, your screen looks like this. And you go through these tabs and go through these questions and provide counseling while going through these questions. Okay? And so in both groups, your screen looks like this. In the game frame group, uh, there were a bunch of bubbles that looked like this. So the first question was, what benefits uh, kind of might you expect to get from quitting smoking? Caller says, I think I'm going to breathe easier, I'm going to save money, I'm going to not get cancer. Counselor says back, great, it sounds like uh, uh, you're feeling like uh, you'll breathe easier, you're not going to get uh, uh, cancer, and that you'll live longer. There were, through these tabs, a bunch more questions and a bunch of these framed hand statements. So the first goal was, could we train quitline specialists to provide this novel counseling? Um, and what we did uh, was take about 20% of call tapes and coded them through blind raters um, in a currently validated system with content from two game frame items, four standard care items, and we trained these raters, and then we uh, and then we tested ICCs to make sure that the ratings were um, appropriate across raters and got and got uh, quite good ICCs, uh, 0.87 to 0.99. And so I got this big grant. Um, I, f I flew out to Buffalo. I met with Mike. Uh, with Mike, uh, uh, Mike is a, a really well-known guy, a truly lovely guy. He's very gracious. He takes me out to breakfast. We're strategizing, me training their people. Looked me in the eye and he says, Ben, I don't think it's going to work. And I'll tell you why. I think that you're not going to be able to train my people, and so there's going to be no difference. Very motivational. <laughs> so I'm glad to say that Mike was wrong. <laughs> we could train their people. Um, and so what we saw are, in the two gain frame items, quite large differences, uh, statistically different differences. And then in these four uh, standard, uh, standard care items, really tight. So there's really no difference. Okay? Um, and so we train quitline specialists to give a novel counseling type, um, but could we improve qu uh, quit attempts and quitting? And so the answer is quit attempts, big difference. So this is about 31% compared to about 16%, okay? Uh, uh, that favors game frame. Uh, we published these data in January 2010. Um, and at two weeks, um, we have a nice difference to about a 10% bump. Um, this is about 23% compared to about 12. Um, unfortunately, at three months, 
it's no longer statistically different. This is about a 2% difference. It still favors game frames, but it's currently not there at three months. Um, so uh, this is about 28 compared to about 26. Um, so um, at the time that the stimulus money came out, we uh, applied for and got a competitive supplement to look at uh, you know, moderators and mediators of the framed intervention. Um, and one thing that we're really interested in are, um, is, is this construct of, um, of dependence. And so this is a complicated graph. Um, uh, this is mean scores, uh, and that's one SD greater, and that's, and that's one SD smaller. And, th and that's smoking rate, which means that we, want uh, uh, that we want that number to be smaller, okay? And so the dashed line is gain frame, the, the solid line is standard care. And what we see is that if you are greater dependence in the game frame group, uh, that you smoke less uh, than those in standard care. Now, uh, as far as med use goes, so this is med use, uh, this, is, uh, this is quantity use, okay? And so we want that number to be larger. Um, again, the same scale, and, and, and these folks are greater dependence, same slope, but the game frame slope is not statistically different. Standard care is though. And if you have low dependence in standard care, um, uh, you use less meds, okay? And so what did we show? So through the parent study, we um, empirically showed that quitline specialists can be trained to give novel counseling to uh, c callers trying to quit smoking. Um, which says that quit lines need to start to test counseling more and to, um, to conduct s studies to try to change counseling content. It's currently not being done. Um, we found a, a bump from the first two weeks. What Mike and I are really interested in now, so we don't want to do more calls because more calls is going to be more labor and a lot more money. What would be low cost and still translational would be other interventions like mass texting, perhaps IVR calls. I'm really interested in doing applications through droids and through iPhones. Um, and so that would let us try to prolong our, our, treatment, our treatment bump um, and not cost a lot more money. And now those of you that know me know that my final slide is generally my children. And so this is Tyler, my two-year-old, and that's, and that's Dylan, my five-year-old. Are there questions? And this is my contact.